with identifying some cut flowers that grow well in Oklahoma. As you can see, we have um, some lush zinnias around our fountain. This variety is actually was actually bred for Oklahoma, so it's an Oklahoma zinnia variety. They're not native to Oklahoma, but they just do really well here and they attract a lot of pollinators. Um, we also have some cosmos. We also have Cosmos. These also do really well in Oklahoma and make a great cut flower. Um, they come in a wide variety of colors. There's pink, there's orange, there's white, yellow, all different kinds. Um, we also have Forget-Me-Nots. These are really cute because they're blue. Blue flowers are kind of rare, so cut Forget-Me-Not, a great blue cut flower. Um, we also have a lot of marigolds. These do well in Oklahoma. These are also a good companion plant because they attract uh, ladybugs. So these are good summer varieties to grow in Oklahoma. There's also varieties that do well in the spring, like tulips, daffodils, irises, things like that you can grow in the spring and get some cool season um, cuts from those. So when cutting flowers, you just wanna make sure that you're cutting properly to maximize the vase life. So that way um, you can enjoy your flowers for longer indoors. Um, one important thing whenever cutting flowers is you want to make sure, obviously, that you're getting a good length, but also you want to make sure you're cutting in between two nodes. So these are nodes. It's just areas of new growth that come off of the stem. Um, here's some more nodes right here. So you can tell this is going to grow into a whole new stem and a whole new flower. So you want to make sure you cut just above the nodes. Right here, this is a perfect place to cut because it splits into two nodes. So you'll cut right above it. So that way the plant is still gonna grow and generate more flowers. If you just cut it at a random spot in the plant, it might damage it and it'll probably stop growing there. So once you have your flower cut, I usually cut all of the lower and big leaves off just so they don't sit in the water. Anything that's sitting in the water is gonna cause bacteria growth and it's just gonna shorten the vase life of your flowers. I'll usually leave the very top two or sometimes I'll cut those off as well. And then very important, before you put it in the vase, you're going to want to make sure you cut your flower at a 45 degree angle like that. This is going to expose um, the insides of the flower. This is where the flower is going to absorb all the water. So cutting it at an angle just gives it more surface area, more space to absorb water and that's just going to maximize your vase life also. One important thing to note is you don't want to fill your vase up too much. This one actually has too much water in it to, for me. Um, I like to fill my vase up like maybe a third of the way to halfway. You don't want to fill it up too much because that just might lead to more bacteria growth on your flower. So, And you also don't want any floating debris in there. That's just going to help maximize the vase life. The flowers really don't need a whole lot of water. They really just need enough to cover the very bottom. These are um, Muscogee peaches, is what we're calling them. Vernon Courtright, he had seedlings of these. Um, apparently this variety of peach was brought from Georgia on the Trail of Tears by Muscogee people. So we got a seedling of it and now we're growing it here at the college. And this is the first year that it has peaches on it, so it's really exciting. So Oklahoma is home to a wide variety of wildflowers, especially in the spring and summertime. Um, and those can also be added to your arrangement. It's important when harvesting wildflowers to make sure that you're doing it respectfully. Um, so that's kind of what we're going to cover right now. First things first, you always want to make sure you have um, permission to be on the property where you're cutting your wildflowers. You don't want to just go taking a random person's wildflowers. Um, you also, when cutting, um, kind of like we did in the garden, you just want to make sure, especially when you're cutting wildflowers, that you cut in between the nodes just above the leaf. So that way the wildflowers continue to regenerate. You don't want to just go out here and start damaging plants and cutting their flowers off. Um, 
Another important thing to note when harvesting wildflowers or just wild plants in general is to um, is to leave some behind. You don't want to take all of the wildflowers. You want to leave some behind for other people or for other animals, other insects. Um, you also don't want to take the best and the prettiest ones. So I always choose like the second or third prettiest ones and leave the best one behind because um, you don't want to be greedy. You just want to save that one for, for nature, for the animals. Um, this one that I'm cutting right now uh, is goldenrod. It's a uh, native wildflower in Oklahoma. Really good for pollinators, really pretty, and it does great as a cut flower. And I'm just cutting those lower leaves off that are probably gonna, would probably be sitting in the water if I left them on. Get some of these purple ones. Um, this one is some kind of thistle. I'm not sure which one, but this is also great for pollinators and it's really pretty. It makes a good cut flower. Some other good wildflower varieties that grow in Oklahoma would be um, Black Eyed Susan. Um, there's some wild yarrow that grows out here. There's some wild parsley with some really small white flowers that looks really pretty. Um, Indian paintbrush, which is the state flower, is also a great cut flower. Um, not a flower, but this is some kind of foxtail. It's growing out of some grass, but these also look really cute in arrangements. They're not as showy and colorful as what we would expect with flowers, but they just add like a really nice rustic touch to your arrangements. Are not only are flowers important for an arrangement, but greenery also is an important part. It's just gonna help the flowers pop. Um, when using herbs, it's gonna add a little bit of fragrance to your arrangement also. Herbs are a great option for greenery in your arrangement just because they respond so well to being cut, they smell good, and they just look pretty. So when harvesting herbs, it's kind of the same way. You wanna make sure that you cut just above the nodes to encourage, encourage more growth. And again, you're just gonna take those lower leaves off that would be sitting in the water. And just put them in. Um, I think growing flowers and herbs is a great option for gardeners, especially if you haven't had any luck growing vegetables. Um, herbs are really good because, you know, you can grow a lot in a small space. This bed right here has seven different kind of herbs in it, so you can fit a lot of herbs in a small bed or a container. Um, you can also grow them indoors or outdoors. They grow really well in both environments. If you're growing them indoors, you're likely to get continued production all year long. They probably won't flower or go to seed like these. Herbs are also great for repelling bugs, so if you add herbs to your garden, add herbs to your flower beds. It's just gonna help keep some of the bugs away. Bugs don't really like these fragrant, strong smelling plants. And then some herbs also have medicinal, medicinal benefits. Um, so things like uh, mint you can use if you have digestion issues, you can use like a mint tea and it'll help with that. Um, rosemary is good for improving memory. When I was in college, I used to take some rosemary from campus and uh, just sniff it while I studied and did my homework. Um, lavender, which we have over here, is good for insomnia or if you're just having trouble relaxing, uh, the aroma of lavender has like a sedative effect on most people. And then when you're growing herbs, most of them um, grow well from seed, so like mint, parsley, um, fennel, those are gonna grow really well from seed. Slower, like woody herbs, like lavender or rosemary, things like that, you're probably gonna wanna buy from the store because growing it from seed just takes so long. Um, we have a rosemary plant right here. We started this one in March, and this is how big it is. 
and it's July now. So rosemary is a good one just to, I would recommend purchasing it from the store instead of trying to grow it from seed because it's so slow growing. Beautiful. Today is the focus on, on the flowers and herbs and, and how the Muscogee people utilize these things in order to better their, their lives. And we are all familiar with, with these big plants like the corn and, and how that species in general helps us to maintain our, our way of life. And now is the green corn ceremony time. And so a lot of the herbs are being harvested for that purpose. It's a cleansing process for the new year. And so the relationship the Muscogee people have on, on the plants that are used in the, in the mixture here, one of the ingredients is it's like, like the Mikohonija, snake roots, and the bergamot, bee balm, and, and other plants that they put in there for specific purposes that they want an outcome for the people who are partaking in the ceremonies. So a lot of it also involves songs, and some many times that there, there are, this is accompanied by a dance. And so we fulfill these things because of, there are those that, that, that can see, seers, I would say, that looking at the people, they, they notice that there is something that needs to be addressed, the way that they're behaving. And a lot of times it's, it's through, we use our medicines in order to, to put that in ourselves so, so that we become balanced and, and in harmony. And so this is a time when we're supposed to let go of all these things that, that bother us, but it's through the use of, of, of the herbs and, and that, that helps us, it cleanses us. So these are some of the things that I wanted to, to just bring out uh, about the relationship that we have. There are times, the stories that sometimes there's illness that comes upon our land mainly because we've abused a certain species and that's the understanding of, of, of our, our people. The e traditional ecological knowledge is, is the, the idea that, that we are impacting the rest of life in general. Every, what we do has an impact on, on this web of life and, and that understanding that, that you walk in, in the sacred way that once you see that you have witnesses looking at you all over, all around you, then, then you know that you walk in a good way so that the species respect you and you respect them. And that, that lack of respect is what they say it causes these great illnesses that, from animals or a plant species or a variety of plant species that do cause sicknesses on people also they can heal. That's how you, that relationship that we have. Ajagi do irishya hishakta. Hishakta ajagi. Hishakta is life in general. And so that's that's what we look at. And respecting all life. Manadego shin chimone yakto escha. Mado for watching today's gardening series episode. You can come visit our garden in person every Thursday from 11 to 12 here at the College of the Muscogee Nation.